Hey, hey everybody, um, without pegging this out too loud, I wanted to welcome you to another Free Matt podcast. I'm the one and only Matt Fremat. I am usually joined by the one and only General Patrick Flynn. He is enjoying this nice late spring day. It feels like wonderful outside. I will send him your regards. The Free Map Podcast, if you guys didn't already know this, uh, used to be, or usually is, a libertarian uh, roundtable discussion. We used to, or I usually get an article to read about. Um, I, I do plan on doing that in the f- near future. If you guys did have ideas, uh, there is an email below that you can uh, kite those over to me. I offend some of the uh, ex-cons among us, but it's a good term. Thank you, guys. Oh, my my video, it's a Defending the Indefendable video. Um, these guys, and it's mostly men, thank you, they have, uh, best way I can describe, probably for close to 50 years now, have wreaked havoc on both Americans and Russians. They are some rough, hard scrabble type people. They've been able to survive. They're always on the run. They're the Taliban. And you would ask me, how could you defend that level of undefendable people? The evil, or supposed evil they have done. Somebody invaded their country. I know it was us. It, we were punishing them for hiding Osama bin Laden and some other nefarious characters. A lot of people remember uh, terrorist uh, training camps and what have you. I can't take that. I can't take that. Away. Your concerns are legitimate. But the irony about what I say today about defending the Taliban. Over 20 years, they've been able, to, been able to run, fight, and hide. Over this time frame, even though we've had democratic, we helped democratic elections in Afghanistan, plenty of people, despite the bombing, showing up to vote, large swaths of, of the country think supposed stability and in the long run the Americans do pull out sorry we do have to go home eventually I have to be that dickhead libertarian we did have to go home now something I want you guys to think about they're going back and seeing several news stories about Hamid Karzai, who used to be, I think, the president of, uh, of of Afghanistan. A lot of people remember that his brother was like a warlord or an opium uh, hustler. And I remember him being in power. I remember him being propped up, more or less. Us trying to help build the building blocks of a democratic or at least some type of parliamentarian society for these folks to try to push them away from the past. In the past, uh, it was the 90s, I believe the Taliban had uh, a plurality at one time of power. And I do have an Afghanistan book upstairs I did not grab. Anyway, the communists fail, or even the Afghan commies failed. There are several other uh, groups that are represented by, well, their own people, uh, ethnic groups. This is a very strange country. Uh, The best way I could describe it, the region's strange, but this country's weird. And it's, it's, it's a difficult proposition. Now, back to my defending the Taliban. If you look at who has been doing the most to try to seize power. 
it was the Taliban. But I I don't care. I know, understand that they've used methods of terror, that the religious extremist, they've done all sorts of hair-raising awful things. They're not fans of democracy. They're It's a, a theocracy, more or less. Now, what I want to share with you, and I want you guys to think about this, they're slowly grabbing large swaths of the territory. They are making people cower to their to their force. They're giving people an option, one option, and that's the Taliban. But you would ask me, what does this have to do with defending them? When they seize a large portion of the government, they will be the government. No one else is doing what they're doing to try to do it. I'm not a huge fan of force over uh, democratic means or or parliamentarian or whatever you want to call it. But the the thing that you need to you need to digest is who's doing the most? Who's who's fighting the hardest? And in a power vacuum it's it's a doggy dog world. If you look if you look at a, a really great example I wanted people to look in the late seventies, you had corrupt South Vietnam South Vietnamese government. You had coups and counter coups. You had people even the acting government people were trying to find ways to put money in their pockets and, and help from the government, uh US government and there wasn't stability. And do you know who was fighting the hardest besides the Americans? It was the North Vietnamese. Viet Cong, with help of the Chinese, I understand. But who wanted it the most? The people who lived in that government, that lived in that country, the people who fought the hardest were the Vietnamese. I'm sorry. I understand the sensitivities of uh, people who actually were involved with Vietnam knew a handful myself i do i do tip i do tip my hat to those people but when you look at the large scheme of things when the people aren't fighting against this they're not fighting against them the de facto government will be the per the, be the group of people or the the organization that does their damnedest to fight the hardest and seize the larger the larger uh, seats of power uh, voting, uh, resources, the old people, you know, people checking their names. And if you look at these chieftains and they're like, we just got steamrolled and we're going to sign over our rights. We're going to be Taliban friendly. And you got to start to think, you're like, okay, well, I could let them kill everybody later on, or we could just placate these people. And you look and the rest of the government or the other groups aren't doing this. They're not going through and saying, Hey, yeah, we'll protect you guys. Just join up with us. We have a coalition. Oh, sure. Uh, coalition governments sound great, but in the, in the end of things, if you're not fighting, you're not fighting for, or, you know, for the big show, for that big chunk, you know what? You're not going to get it. And, it's more looking more and more like right now that the Taliban will be the say if they're not going to be the majority they'll be a plurality they'll have uh, the most influence they'll get people in government or they'll smash the government they did it before and I want folks to think that way they're like okay that's that doesn't sound good I'm like okay it's 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 what you have to deal with we had to deal with. Uh, when the communists took over in Vietnam, we had to, uh, unfortunate, you know, the, the boat people, it was a nightmare. But in the long run, their government was run by, you know, the communists. It's the Vietnamese communists. And I'm not telling you I like doing it either. Everybody makes these emotional arguments about, you know, oh, the women are going to be, I was like, the women are going to be punished. It's punishment for women. They'll not know how to live in freedom. Freedom lost. The Taliban won. 
or they're winning. They haven't won overall, but these people have to make that, you know, deter self determination, that drive for it. And you have to start to think, okay, they lost. It's I, I get past the feelings. I think it's I think really soft people want to send troops back over there for emotional reasons and it's shit or good off the pot for these folks. I don't like saying it, but it really it has to be said. And one day if when the Taliban steamrolls Kabul, knocks out all the buildings and strings people up from light posts, which I don't want to see, but when they're like, Yeah, we're in charge of this government and everybody else cowers and everybody gets Burkas thrown on them or whatever they do over there, which cultural ignorance on my part, whatever. Our government will have to say, okay, they're the government. What are we going to do? Uh, are we going to have trade? Are we going to not going to have trade? Are they going to be in the World Trade Organization? Are they going to scoff at us? Do we have to call these people when something happens? Do we have diplomatic status? And you know what? It's down the pipe. And as much as you hate doing it, you know what? After 20 years, maybe the Taliban won. They outlasted us. It's, yeah. All right. If y'all liked, you know, like today's video, there's like uh, notifications down there. I think there's a subscribe and then there's a hit your notifications, a little bell, dingy dingy. All right. Below that, you have, uh, should have my Twitter gab parlay when it works right when they're not pissing me off i do have hate email if you have any ideas uh, articles whatever you want to pitch at me hey if you just want to tell me how much this show sucks feel free to email me and you know what whatever i mean bless you anyway thank you for joining us i uh, hope to see you uh, again in the comment section uh Party your uh, rear ends off. Thank you.